So I guess I've always been a, an avid reader, uh, thanks to my mum. And so through books came my passion for stories. And, um, and I, I had a very um, typical sort of university background of like literature, English, French, because I'm, I'm French. Um, and then I hesitated after my master's, should I become a professor? and teach my love for stories or should I write them myself and that that's when the big sort of revelation uh, came in that I I needed that creative um, aspect and so uh, and I pursued storytelling um, first short stories that I've I wrote uh, for a while in French and then um, from then when I studied in England I went to um, I, I watched a lot of BBC shows and uh, and their adaptations of all my favorite novels. And that's sort of when I realized that I could do the same because of my literary background and I could also write my own stories. So that was really the first like bridge towards uh, becoming a, a screenwriter. It was very weird. I was so lengthy uh, and I have that tendency already in like my short stories. So it, it was tricky. Uh, my first screenplays are like 200 pages. so right in the in the garbage. <laughs> um, but also something interesting is that um, I wrote those short stories in French uh, because it's my mother tongue and I feel like French is maybe more of a flowery language so you can sort of expand and um, and I've always written my scripts in English because English is such such a concise direct um, language and so I think the transition was maybe eased a little bit because I switched languages and it I so it, it became a bit bit more synthetic uh, as I switched to English so that helped me a little bit but of course training 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 um, <laughs> rewrite and rewrite and rewrite I really write all my screenplays in English and that's also how I've been taught because I, I went to the American Film Institute so I really learned the skills and of the the craft in English and so I find it so difficult when I have to write a script in French um, so it's, it's really weird because it's not the same tools um, and I think I, I'd be lost if I were to write like a short story in English because I would write it much better in French so it's really funny how the brain sort of divides that and yeah English for screenplays and French for short stories. <laughs> So this one in particular, I started writing it in school. So I guess I was, an, I had an advantage because I had all my classmates to help me um, build the world and uh, refine the characters and their journeys. Um, but now that I'm out of school, um, I, I kept uh, a little group of friends that whose notes I trust. And um, I usually send them before the draft one just all my preliminary documents, uh, may it be uh, beat sheets, treatments, outlines, uh, everything that sort of uh, makes the story expand. And then, and then I structure it, of course. But yeah, just I, I need notes from the very beginning. Um, I guess because I love brainstorming. It's like my favorite stage of writing a story because you can go in every direction and nothing's, nothing stops you. You can expand wherever you want to go. And then comes the structure and that's it's like oh no I need to like put things into boxes and so that's why I need early on uh, friends to sort of be like no this can't be a midpoint no this can't be a low point no no your climax is in the wrong place <laughs> so um yeah I I need I need notes very early on I've had the opportunity once to do a table read and I have to say it's life-changing it's honestly amazing to hear back from actors because they come from such a different perspective. They give extremely subtle, like psychological notes and um, it's incredibly insightful for characters and characters are like my favorite part of uh, a story. So um, yeah, actors notes are amazing. So I wish I could do that more because their feedback is really awesome. I happened to read an article on Al Anna Coleman Ladd who is this American sculptor who opened a workshop in Paris to mold and paint these prosthetic masks. And uh, I had never heard of this story. It, and though it happened in France, and in France we talk about World War I a lot, I had never heard of that. And so I, of course I was fascinated because I, art is one of my favorite subjects. I write a lot about arts in my scripts. And um, you know, the, like usually the main observation uh, that you make um, on art is that it's useless in a way. You just hang it in a museum. It's beautiful. It's 
soul searching and soul revealing everything you want, but it's still going to end up in a museum. And I thought it was incredible that art in that particular um, instance happened to help these disfigured soldiers find their humanity again and, and their dignity. And it was, I think, unprecedented. And so I really, really wanted to explore um, identity, how you reconstruct your identity, who you are without a face, um, and uh, is, is art what makes us human uh, in the end? Is that why we can still make art when there's a war raging and all human values are shattered? Um, so it was really that that I wanted to explore. And then delving deeper into disfigurement and uh, we, we have even a term in French, we call these people the gueule cassée, so like the broken faces. So it's really something that's big in France. They, they, they have like a special name just for these, this kind of disfigurement. And so um, I uh, ended up delving into like science and surgery, like the other, the other side. So I thought it was really interesting to put those two sides um, side by side. Science, uh, which was trying with the little knowledge that they had of grafts and um, uh, yeah, how to reconstruct a face. And then when it failed, the other side, art, which sort of took over and, and tried to like recreate a face with a mask. So I just thought it was, it was so incredible. <laughs> Following all the characters um, through like ABC stories and trying to be, because I was always more focused on the mask and the surgery and everything afterwards was like, oh, I need to find plot for this character and so it was I think finding plot and um, probably trying to use all the research you've made and make it entertaining like make a story out of it because I spent hours and hours like days and months just researching finding like articles on surgery on the masks um, on the hospitals everything I could find to sort of get a clear picture of what it was like at the time and uh and then how do you jump from that research, which is, which is heartbreaking. I have to say it was really hard because I watched a lot of pictures for, of course, of these disfigured men. And it was, it was kind of hard. Um, so how do you make a really human story out of all that research? I've been on the ISA for, I think, two years. Um, I think I discovered it randomly. And then I was amazed at all its features that I think are way superior to like other platforms. Um, and I thought it was just fair. It seemed like a fair platform. And I love that. It's like you get a subscription and then you have access to writing gigs, actual writing gigs, which very few platform enable you to do. So um, yeah, I thought it was incredibly fair and uh, a great opportunity. And I must have submitted to five, six, seven competitions maybe over the years. I've always submitted to the writing gigs. Um, and I think I submitted to the fast track maybe two or three years ago. Um, and this time was the right one, I guess. <laughs> I think the fact that you would get um, meetings out of this uh, fellowship, which is also something that not a lot of um, competitions offer. Um, so that's something that I've really been struggling with since I graduated, um, getting meetings getting my work introduced to people, pitching myself, actually getting there. And so um, that's that's really why I did it for the meetings. And uh, and yeah, and I love the the week, the marathon week. <laughs> it was it was great. Actually, I, I was on Skype with my mom and uh, because of course she she's in France. And I remember while we were talking, the phone rang and I was like, oh, I, I didn't want to interrupt my conversation with my mom. So I picked up, like started, you know, being French and like grumpy. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Molly was so adorable on the other side of the line. And uh, and she she said that. So as as she was telling me, you're Ariana, are you so? I'm like, yes. Uh, and then the, the more I knew what it was about, I was flabbergasted. So in the end, I just ended up like, shrieking in front of my mom who was who was just sharing live <laughs> everything that was happening something i would say to maybe uh someone who goes through that is to be less anxious than i was because everybody was so friendly 
And I don't know, I'm probably, I'm anxious by nature. So maybe that's, you know, by default, I will be anxious, but um, I was probably picturing dreadful interviews and everybody was so nice and friendly and welcoming but that is also that is also an american trait um like americans are way more welcoming and friendly so um yeah maybe be not be as anxious as i was <laughs> they were amazing i i don't have enough good things to say about them they, they were so amazing so helpful so supportive um yeah so they were always um right there saying like if ever it gets like you can't the discussion sort of stalls and you don't know what to say don't worry we, we're there we can intervene and you know like relax the atmosphere and they always start the meetings by breaking the ice and taking a wonderful awkward photo <laughs> so um so yeah everybody just laughs and and it kicks off the meeting with like a good friendly atmosphere so no they've been amazing and then in between sort of giving me feedback on how it went, um, giving me advice for like the next one, what I should work on, uh, what was good, what I should continue doing. Um, they were amazing. True, that was a week before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it was a good way to sort of like break the ice and be like, okay, people are, and maybe it was even more stressful because more people were watching. Uh, there were, yeah, way more people. So, um, no, that was that was great. Also, like great experience, and everybody again was so friendly. But I was so scared and I was so nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you you need to practice your pitches. You need to so getting feedback from actual executives, managers, producers. It was it was a real treat. And and meeting also the other Jeremy, the other fellow, and uh, and the other um, virtual pitch um, nominees and winners. It was really great always have questions <laughs> and that's something I'm really bad at I don't know why um so yeah always do so much research that you have a lot of backup questions if ever the conversation stalls or and it just makes you look interested which is true like you want to make the most of these meetings and learn from these people who have way more experience and so yeah always have more questions prepared I think everybody can submit um again i find the isis the isa so fair um in that i would really encourage everybody to submit um and even if they don't get to be a fast track fellow it means um they can get notes they can get encouragement they can always get to maybe be um steered in like the right direction or something that would bring them closer to their goals so um i would really say anybody. I guess the the exact after after was hibernation mode uh, <laughs> to sort of recover from all the meetings. Um, but no, afterwards, yeah, um, retrieved motivation. Um, and of course, uh, sometimes people would ask you to send material that's not ready. So you're like, ah, ah. so you go back to like the, the writing, <laughs> like, oh, no. So um, yeah, you know, afterwards, you, you need to like, keep up, keep up with what you've started. So um, but but at least you do it while being motivated. So um, yeah, um, more rewrites are um, in, in the works and uh, more projects. And then um, I guess also learning how to keep in touch with people because um, when you've never had meetings and they sort of finally you have a lot um, you have to like you know deal with the transition and how you're going to be able to make the most of them after they've happened so I have to keep in touch with them so I guess yeah organizing myself strategizing a little bit I would like to uh, I have like projects in the making that are almost to um, like outlines uh, format so I I'd need just a little push to, to turn them into scripts. So at least write one script, one full script, um, if not two. And um, and yeah, trying to um, secure relationships um, and like long time working relationships um, after I've submitted my work. So even if none of my features or uh, pilots are picked up, how can I make the most of the existing relationships? So I'm hoping continuing to be able to send uh, material to these people and and maybe being hired for something that'd be amazing. <laughs>